everyone, this is Sean Sutter. I'm the weirdo that created Relic Blade. Um, this video is going to be about painting warbands for skirmish games. Now, um, skirmish games tend to be really a lot smaller than miniature war games. You only need a few models. Uh, you know, I just started playing a game called Saga. That's a skirmish game. It requires about 40 miniatures, which is a lot less than a, a lot of war games. But uh, we're talking about Relic Blade and, um, let's see, Infinity and Waste Man and a couple of other games like Dark Age that really only require, you know, four, six, eight, ten models per side. And, um, and I, I always want to address some of the things that make the hobby challenging, you know, some of the barriers that people face when they first are getting into it. And I find that when you first start um, working on a warband, you know, you end up thinking about each figure in such a way that it can be as intimidating to paint the six models of a warband as it is to paint the six 20-man units of a full-size army. Um, and so it's that sort of like barrier in your mind that I want to address. You know, these are two full-size warbands for Relic Blade. Uh, this is a 100-point Iguan starter set, and that's these are the figures that come in the faction set. Um, the faction sets are cool packs that have everything for uh, starting a new warband. And uh, points-wise, they aren't always 100 points, which is a standard size game. Like, uh, the Wilderkin set is all but this figure, and that comes in at around 75 points, and then this guy is another 25 to make a 100-point list, essentially. Um, you use upgrades, so some characters can be more or less expensive, depending on uh, how you want to play. But uh, what I have here is two full-size warbands. I painted this in one afternoon, and I painted these guys in one afternoon. And... Um, so kind of what I want to do in this video is sit down with you, um, open up a faction set, and paint a full-size warband, or not necessarily 100 points, but paint the faction set with you, and kind of address uh, some of the techniques that I use that are going to be similar to in my other painting video, but, um, but with the purpose of not just finishing one miniature in a sitting, but finishing essentially an army. All right, I hope... Uh, I hope you're ready to get into it and uh, and stay interested if I can be interesting. All right, I've got my Battle Pigs faction set here. Uh, this is a $35 set on relicblade.com and it has everything you need for a pig warband. If you need a little bit of help learning how to glue together your metal miniatures and how to prime them and get them ready to paint, uh, you can check out my how to paint miniatures video uh, on this channel. So I'm gonna go for this painting scheme, the color scheme that's in the artwork here. So red armor, um, iron weapons and equipment details, just brownish skin, dark hair, and then a dark gray for the um, cloth and stuff. So one thing that is helpful when you're approaching painting an army or a warband is to come up with a color scheme that's going to be quite uniform and then breaking it down into a few steps that you can apply to every model in one sitting. So that's going to be the, the main technique we're going to be using here is batch painting where we'll do one color at a time and do it to all four of the models. So uh, most of the area is going to be that brown color of their skin. Um, so what we kind of want to do is work from the largest areas to the smallest areas. So we'll probably start with the skin and then we'll do maybe these gray areas and then do the red areas and then the metal and then things like the teeth will be the very last thing we do and that's um, uh, generally how I'd break it down just largest to smallest sometimes if it'd be easier to pick out a detail 
before painting the background or, or something like that, I might uh, inverse the order. But uh, that's, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do brown for the skin first. So let's start there. I'm going to use gun core brown. Um, any kind of brown would work, but I think this will be good. And I'm also gonna use this, I'm gonna cut corners here and I'm gonna use this on the sand for their base. So we'll get that color going. Big paintbrush here. This is a size six. It was a filbert, but now it's all jacked up from being used um, really rough. But I'm gonna paint all these models this brown. I'm just gonna speed up the painting steps by uh, four times. So it'll be a little bit weird and quick, but also this video is gonna have kind of a long runtime because of that. I feel like it's useful and part of my plan to show you actually every step of the way as I'm working on this um, um, warband. And, you know, being able to show you the entire process from start to finish is what's going to make this more valuable than just seeing a step-by-step -step where I'm like, oh, look, do steps one through four, and I want you to just extrapolate that you do that for a whole army. I want you to see the whole process and get a good sense for how to batch paint and how to finish a whole set and get it tabletop ready uh, without spending forever on it. Okay, now next step. Uh, they're painted brown and I was talking about wanting to do their cloth details next, so what I'm gonna do is grab uh, my favorite color in all paints, it's called Crick's Bane Base, and it's a weird dark green-gray color. I really like it. Now for this step, I'm going to add a little bit of water to my paint. I don't, I'm not really recording my palette very closely, but I'll give you a chance to at least hear what I'm talking about. Or I'd rather I'd talk about what I'm doing. So we're sort of simplifying the paint scheme to be all cloth, all straps, all everything that is sort of that material is going to be this color. Rather than worrying about skirts being one color and belts being another color and the level of detail you might normally want to do for a single figure. And the thing is like when you're done or uh, or if you choose along the way you can add a step here or there and pick up a certain color in a different or a different color for certain materials or details. I think that's worth doing. Um, I often will choose a couple guys to have different colored things, and especially if it's an army of irregulars like these pigs are probably pretty irregular soldiers. They, their equipment isn't all factory made. Now one thought I have to share is sometimes just getting the paint on the model kind of helps break down some of the uh, what's intimidating about wanting to actually start painting a model. So I find like scrubbing the model with a color that's gonna be useful in most of the places, like in this case brown, um, kind of just breaks down that sense of trying to do it right. And then when you work from the biggest area to the smallest area, then each step of the way you only have to worry about not getting paint on uh, 
the part that's already painted the right color. So in this case, I don't want to get this green gray color on the skin, but other stuff like getting it on his weapons or armor, it doesn't really matter. So, cause I'm gonna paint that next or in, in later steps. So you don't have to worry about things so much. Just loose and free and enjoy the process. My hand's getting kind of shaky. I'm painting kind of an awkward position and not using a model holder or anything, just pinching it in my fingers. But um, I kind of wanted to do it this way because using as little special equipment as possible kind of helps you get a sense for doing things. Um, as a beginner, and I'd like to remove barriers, so I'm not going to add special equipment to your to your to-do list, but uh, one tip is definitely to just brace your hand against the table, and uh, if you're having trouble with keeping your hand steady, just bracing against the table is a big, uh, very useful technique. Seems obvious, maybe it is obvious, but it really helps. Okay, so now it is one of those steps where really we're talking about painting the armor next. And um, the armor is about half metal and half red, and so I have to choose which color I want to do first. Um, you know, there's no right or wrong answer necessarily. I think I'm going to go for the red first, um, then I'll come in with the metal later, because there are spots where you've got the red of the armor and then little dots of uh, metal coming through. And so it'll be easier to do the dots than to paint the red around the dots, I think. So we'll try that. Next red, we're, I'm using a Scorn Red from Privateer Press Paints. See, I'm, well, maybe you can't see actually, but I'm dipping my um, paintbrush just a little, a little bit in the water and then introducing the water to my um, red paints just to keep it moist as I'm working, you know, um, keep the consistency watered down because as I'm working, it's going to be drying. Let's jump into metal now. I'm gonna start with this dark metal. It's called pig iron, which is kind of fun. Uh, I don't know what's clever about that. Oh, they're pigs, I get it. Grab a bit, just to get here, I guess. You know, I also, I like 
using a wet palette when I'm painting my models. Um, but here again, I'm just using a palette to simplify and just show that you don't need a lot of special equipment. I mean, you already invested in models and paints. So you don't have to get every, every piece of equipment that exists just to get started. Well, this is going to be a little bit more detailed because I'm going to be doing the edges of his armor. Ooh, that's pretty messy, my goodness. The next details are pretty small, so I'll probably do two in one go. Uh, first, I'm gonna use this great coat gray. It's kind of a blue-gray color to do their hair. I'm gonna use Jackbone as a uh, color for teeth and bone and maybe uh, maybe some of the other little straps and details on there.
last thing I'm gonna do is take this like a uh, rough brush here and I'm gonna dry brush this um, bone color over the sand on the bases. And one last thing I might do is um, get use this dark brown for the handles of like the weapons and things, just so that there's a little more variation. It's funny because there's these guys are mostly brown, right? I mean, they're brown, but using a couple different colors of brown will kind of help break up the the scheme a little bit. just so that the axe handle isn't quite exactly the same color as their skin. Realize I forgot to paint this wristband, which is fine, I can get it in dark brown. To go. All right, so this is sort of where we're at. We've got the uh, main colors blocked in. And it's just the real real basic stuff. Um, so what I'd like to do next is add a wash. So I think what I'll do is um, just go to Agrax Earthshade. Um, this is a dark brown from Games Workshop. See, uh, 
these don't always close all the way, so you gotta really try and make sure they're closed. It's an eight dollar pot of wash. I'd really rather not have spill on the ground. I'm gonna take this uh, violet color. I'd use blue or something if I had it, but um, kind of want a different dark wash to put on the hair. So I'm gonna start again, and I don't really, wor I'm not super worried about the places that are still wet on this model, uh, but I definitely do want to avoid uh, messing with the parts that are already wet too much. Now we can wait for uh, this stuff to dry. So the washes are pretty much dry and at this stage I would come in and work on some highlights. Now to do highlights I'm pretty much going to come back in with the colors I used for the base color because the wash will have made it darker and so the original color will be lighter compared to the areas that are washed. Let's do this. There's my little bit of brown paint there. Mix a little bit of water. And let's get in. So principally highlighting, especially in this case, I'm going to be looking at just kind of hitting the areas where the light, maybe just from above, would hit the parts of the model that stick out the most. And that's just another way to bring out more detail in the figure. Now, to continue with highlight, I'm going to take this, like, flesh tone, which is, like, a very light brown, obviously, but warm and pinky, and I'm going to mix it in and try to get an even lighter highlight. And this I'm going to just use on a few of the uh, brightest points. Not, you could do this a lot more carefully and a lot better, but I'm just doing a quick, fast and easy, right?
Let's see, so next, um, I might come in with a light, light highlight for the cloth. And I actually have the highlight color for this. It's called Crixbane Highlight. And um, it's not as green. It's just sort of a light gray, but I'm gonna use that. In case uh, I wanna pick out some of these highlights. Oh my goodness. So I just accidentally painted that hand gray, but then I just used some water quickly to wash it off. All right, now let's pay a little bit closer attention. Uh, try and get the camera to focus, and there we highlighted. Take some orange and mix it with the red. Try and get some brighter spots in here if we can. Probably gonna look a little bit off over. Let me just that out. thing I'm gonna worry about doing is taking some black and then painting along the rim of the bases and this sort of cleans up the model Makes it look like you did the thing on purpose instead of just on a mess. I just want to paint the eyes black. Here is a uh, fun hobby tip for you. These are static grass tufts. These, I think, are from, hmm, I forget what company. Maybe Army Painter. Um, but anyways, they come with just a bunch of groups of grass and they are super detailed on their own. So when you do a paint job like this, that's like really quick and sloppy and you're like fiddling around with a camera and stuff the whole time. Um, so they don't, it doesn't look that great. These will always look great 
So, so when you stick a couple of these on your bases, it will make the whole model go up a level or two in paint quality. So what I like to do is just grab some super glue. And put a spot of super glue down. Grab one of these tufts. Stick them on there. And then use a tool to really make sure it's stuck on the super glue. So let's get all these guys. Alright guys, so here we go. Quick, dirty paint job, but with uh, painted bases and stuff, I'm gonna come out alright. So let me set these up for a cool shot on terrain. Batch painting models is a lot of fun. It's super rewarding to uh, start with unpainted models and end with a full unit that's fully painted. You know, at this stage you can come back and add fine details. I might paint something on the banner, you know, pick out some fun stuff. Uh, these, these last steps are really the most fun, so I'd encourage you to experiment and just really enjoy the process. I hope you learned something watching this video, and uh, as always, thanks for checking it out.